Today, we're going to take a peek at transformers. We're going to look at step up, which create very large voltages, as well as step down, which create very large currents. So before we get to all the sparks and the flames and the fun, there's two fundamental principles that we need to cover. One is how do we create magnetic fields in general? And two is this thing that's called Faraday's law. Both of which, by the way, I've covered in previous videos if you want to see some other interesting demonstrations about them. But the basics here are, you can create a magnetic field two ways. One is with a permanent magnet, like a bar magnet, and the other is by running current through a wire. Now, if you run current through a wire through a loop, and let's say you do it in this direction, like this, then that's gonna create a magnetic field that's pointing upwards. If you run current the other direction, then that'll run, make magnetic field that's pointing downwards. Now, there's other thing called Faraday's law says that if you have a conductor, let's say you have just a single loop wire like that, just sitting there like that, then it's happy as long as nothing is changing. So right now there's no magnetic field, it sits there, there's nothing. But if a magnetic field appears, let's say suddenly in the upwards direction, then it's gonna oppose that. It wants to stay at zero. We talked about how we can create magnetic fields by running currents, right? So an EMF is gonna be created, a voltage is gonna be created in the wire, and that's going to create a current that makes a magnetic field pointing downwards. So we have an external magnetic field that appears upwards, and we're gonna have a uh, induced current in the wire from Faraday's law that's producing magnetic field downwards so that those cancel each other out. Essentially, it's trying to stay at zero. Now this works in reverse as well. If a field is present and strong and it's just steady and not changing, then the wire, the, that conductor is happy, all right? But if you suddenly make that disappear, so the field was up, then it wants to create current to keep the field up, keep it going the way it was. That's what Faraday's law is. Now, the other thing here is if you stack a bunch of those wires, you create something that's called a solenoid, which makes a very strong magnetic field. Solenoid, not to be confused with an actuator, they're used often, not interchangeably, but an actuator is a solenoid that has a piece inside that moves. Okay, so now we have all the pieces we need. Now we can go melt some stuff and make some flames. Okay, so now let's look at a really cool application of this. What I have here is a very large solenoid, that thing we just talked about before, all these wires stacked up, and that's produced a magnetic field upwards like this, very strongly. Now a key here is that this is AC current, alternating current, which means the current is going to, the magnetic field is going to be up, and then it's going to be zero, and then it's going to be down. Up, zero, down. It does that every 60, uh, sorry, 60 times a second, 60 hertz is AC. So that means that this big loop of wire, if you picture what I did on the board, this is the other loop of wire, is going to be experiencing a very rapid change, a constant change of magnetic field inside of it. And we learned it's not going to like that. It's going to produce a very large voltage to oppose that. A voltage big enough to actually burn this gap of air. Now, an interesting thing, this is called Jacob's Ladder, by the way, is that uh, it takes about 30,000 volts a centimeter to break down air. This is only plugged into 120 volts. So this is actually stepping up the voltage. It's called a transformer. So you go from a low number of turns to a high number of turns, and you increase your voltage. Now you decrease the current, energy stays conserved, but you increase the voltage. Enough so that 120 volts is now thousands of volts. Another interesting thing about this is that you'll notice as this thing goes up, the gap widens. So you would think it would require more and more voltage for this thing to work. But actually in reality, what's happening is the air is already ionized and already heated and hot air rises. And so the, it's easier for it to burn air, to break down the air. And so it actually um, doesn't require more voltage to climb up. So that's pretty cool. So that is a dramatic result of stepping up voltage using a step up transformer. So we went from 220 turns here to 10,000 turns here that stepped our voltage up which also decreases current. But what happens if we step down with a transformer? So what if we go from 220 turns to, oh, I don't know, one turn? And by the way, this is a turn. I know it uh, looks a little ridiculous. It's a big chunk of copper that's gonna conduct current and it's connected, and maybe you'll see in the close-up shot later, by a single nail. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that over there. And now what we're gonna see happen is, we're gonna have a step down of voltage, but a very large increase of current, and that should look quite dramatic. Okay, so I am now running enough current through this nail that it's heating up dramatically. And if we run enough current through this nail, 
We may even get it to melt right into two. And we're getting so much current because this is a step down transformer. So we're stepping down. Whoa, and there we go. Melt it all the way through. Pretty cool. Well, hopefully you found that interesting. I always find that one to be pretty fun. If you enjoy physics and science content, go ahead and give me a subscribe. I try to post some pretty fun and interesting science. I also do a lot of shorts. And as always, remember, physics is fun. Catch you in the next one.